Today, we have two gorgeous blondes from Love Island sitting across Ooh. from me, Deb Chubb and Mackenzie Dittman. How are we Hi. doing? What's up, you guys? <laughs> I feel so far away from you guys. I know, but I, it's all happening, it's a, as it, they say. It's all happening. I that somewhere. We're looking good as gold. <laughs> I feel like you're far away maybe for the camera setup, oh, yeah. oh. so I don't think it'll look weird when it all comes together. Yeah, it's okay. I have my drink. That's all that matters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, cheers. We're finally getting cheers. into some shenanigans. I know. I'm so excited. We've been trying to plan this for... A while. Way over a month, two months. Like it was before maybe even the scandal all stuff hit. I think I, it was. Brad and I were gonna do an episode with you, Deb, mm -hmm. and uh, then over the last couple months, I got to know Mackenzie, and then we didn't kick Brad out of the podcast. We just figured <laughs> we'd do a girls' one, yeah. and yeah. then we could do another with him. Yeah, exactly. of course. But have you been here before? Because you did Ariana's podcast, yes, right? Yes, right after Love Island, I did Ariana's podcast, and that's where I first met Brad and Ariana, actually. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha, because cool. I met you in San Diego, right? Yes. At which Tom show. If we think oh, about it now, <laughs> when you and I met, it was mid-September. It was Raquel's birthday. Yes. Are we allowed to say that name? Yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> Rachel, I, Raquel. I try to go by Rachel. Okay, Rachel. <laughs> you know, let's, her friends call her Raquel, and she has no friends left. So... <laughs> Um, we were down in San Diego for Tom Sandoval on the Most Extras show. Yes. And now that we know everything that we know, you know they were already hooking up then. Oh. Oh. T. Deb <laughs> oh, didn't I, know. I, I, okay, no, but that makes sense. I guess I didn't think about it. But yeah. That's, you're right. Well, then the first night that I met Tom Sandoval, we were going out with Raquel mm -hmm. to a concert. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you're going to need to give me some more details about this. So I met up with Brad and Deb, and then they're like, hey, we're going to go to a concert tonight. Come with us. I was like, okay. So then we go to Schwartz and Sandy's, and then Raquel shows up. And then shortly after that, Tom Sandoval showed up with one of his band members. And he was just like, I think I've watched him on the show for so many years. I had a bit of an expectation in my head as to like what he was gonna be like. And then he was very different from what I expected. Like different how? Different, like literally physically. Uh -huh. I like physically he looked a lot different. And then his like energy was, I guess like it wasn't that different from how it is on the show, but it was another thing to like be in that presence. And now looking back, I think that there was this kind of weird underlying like tension or like energy exchange between him and Raquel like mm -hmm. looking back because he was so desperate to come to the concert with us. The concert was sold oh, out yes. and he was desperate to come with us. And I'm thinking to myself, I wish Ariana was here. Like yeah. I really like, I had met her at Halloween uh -huh. and I thought she was so nice. And I was like, oh, I wish she was here. But he was like so desperate to go to this concert with us. And I, think I like- he bought his own ticket. He did, he like, literally bought his own which ticket. Is, and this was to see who? This was to see DJ. Mala, like yeah. the DJ Mala. I'm sure Tom Sandoval is a massive Mala <laughs> fan. <laughs> Literally, his friend <laughs> with like, his friend. What? Oh wait, didn't you say that apparently like Tom lied and said that he like loved Mala, and then his band member is like, wait, Tom Who never this? listened to it. <laughs> I don't. I didn't say that. But I, I somebody could see told that me that. Somebody told me that. But, but that was the night when. So, can I say my? I don't. Yeah, you okay. yeah. your part. So yeah. this is like my like when I got the phone call because I think Brad was with Ariana and I think I was like the one person he told when it all happened he's like I just have to tell someone you can't say anything and I was like oh my god what's going on yeah and I was like holy shit when we were at that concert I remember we went back to Brad's for like just to like chill everyone was like leaving but we all were like drinking having fun so we were all just hanging out and Raquel and Tom were gone for a little and I didn't really think anything of it and then Raquel came back and her makeup was all like kind of messed up and in my head I was like was she just making out with someone <gasps> but like yeah. it didn't even like I was like and this I think at the time was maybe when the rumors of like the open relationship were going on yeah so I was like maybe it is open I just like didn't want to insert myself in anything so I just like didn't say anything and I was like that's so far-fetched like and then I was like oh my god they were like making out somewhere 
crazy. Oh yeah. my god. I mean, I was definitely like pretty like on one from the concert still. We had so much, <laughs> so I was much not, fun. I was not, but he did give off an energy like when I had that was around the time that I had heard the same things about their relationship, and he had been like a little flirtier with me than I would have like cared for. Oh. Well, at dinner he was like fixated on figuring out like who I looked like. And he was like, he's like, who who do you look like? Who do you look like? And I'm thinking like, I, I don't, I don't know. I look like, like me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like I, I don't know who I look like. You could just say I'm pretty. Like, but, yeah. <laughs> but I, but it was weird though. Like, he like seeing now like on the show and like I know we're gonna dive into like this week's episode, but like seeing them together on the show I see it more than in person like it was easy I feel like to your credit like how you didn't believe it like right. yeah they didn't have this like to me I didn't feel a natural chemistry with them like yeah. it, it did not it I did not get that vibe and I am one of the first ones to like pick up on something she's like that. very intuitive I'm very observant and I didn't I would not have guessed this like hanging out with them at yeah. all Crazy, because you've known Rachel for how long, right? Yeah, we grew up together. We went to elementary school, middle school, and high school together. I, Crazy. So I, did you know her when she went by Rachel, or it was I always never, Raquel? It was always Raquel. Okay. I never knew that was her name. And that when people were saying, is her real name Rachel? And I was like, no, because in elementary school, you always know everybody's deepest, darkest secrets, and you would like at recess be like, ha-ha, Rachel. <laughs> so I was like, what? But come to find out, that was true. But I asked one of my friends. So I moved my sophomore year of high school. So I was like... But still, regardless, I was like, was that her name? And they're like, I guess she just went by Raquel all along. But she was always like the nicest person ever. Like the character that she was on the show is who she yeah. is in real life. Was in That's real, who we, we I know. thought. Yeah, I know. We've all been bamboozled here. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so I, I think I said to you, I was like, I've never so like poorly misjudged somebody's character. Totally. It's frightening. I know. And no, it's, sad. it's made me rethink so many things yeah. in my life. I'm like, I feel like I don't trust anybody now. Everyone is doing something bad. Everyone's hiding something. I hang out with Lala so much that I feel like I get a lot of that energy now. And now I'm taking that on. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Everyone is bad. And it's like, <laughs> no, I still want to have the, like, I see good in people. Right. Yeah. But then I see good in people. And look what happens to me. Yeah. So. Well, and it's also hard for you when you're defending one of your best friends to <sighs> the grave and then you're like what the fuck was that for i know so, I, I guess I'd, that's where like you know in this you you want to be like your most genuine self on tv and like that's something that i think you know everyone wants to put out there but obviously like being in the situation that you guys are in having been on this show for so long mm -hmm. like there's no way that like at some point you don't think about like okay my image like how am i coming across and she clearly invested so much time oh yeah and energy into creating this image of herself that that's where like when the affair started i i see tom obviously just wanted out like mm -hmm. he wanted out of the relationship that's what it seems like that's that and he we, wasn't man enough to just, right. to say, just that say that and leave right. yeah but for raquel i'm like i'm confused what your end game was because you created this right. image around being so like saintly i and thought the same thing in last week's episode when she was crying about um uh oliver was that his yes. name? yeah um how she was so like bamboozled I keep saying that word and but that's she just... had already slept with Tom at this point it doesn't oh, make sense it doesn't, it doesn't make sense every episode it just gets oh. worse The as much as I know and the more we see in each episode it's so insane like this week I had to make a list of my top four cringe moments okay. of the episode oh my <laughs> let me know if you agree okay <laughs> and for those watching on YouTube comment below <laughs> So the Tom and Tom scene in the beginning of the episode, they are both lying through their teeth. The worst yeah. You can just tell. Yes. Like, it doesn't matter when, who found out about what, whenever. I mean, Schwartz has already gone on Watch What Happens Live and said what he said. He found out in August, but it was after they kissed at the wedding. He thought it was a one night stand. Whatever the fuck he said on Watch What Happens Live. I don't know. It was a mess. But when Schwartz said, I think she has a crush on someone else, and then they're talking about Sandoval fertilizing Ariana's eggs, I'm like, are you guys just hitting your, like, talking points in this right now? Because it was weird watching that conversation. Yeah. Knowing that, like, 
y'all know it, what you did. It did feel very staged. Like, every interaction, like, after the wedding between the Toms has felt very staged to me. Yeah. Like, it hasn't felt, because Tom Sandoval, every single time he sees Raquel, just lights up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, in a way that, like... In okay, a creepy way. I My re- my quick request to Bravo is, like, I know how much you love your fans. Can you please send up stress balls, like, punching bags? <laughs> if we're going to get through... <laughs> like, seriously, if we're going to get through these final episodes, like, I yeah. need something. Especially because knowing, because now I look at Tom and I'm like, you're lying, you're lying. I'm yes. so angry. Liar. Everything's a lie. I'm like, you're the worst liar ever. I'm so angry. And watching... Okay, so that was... That was the first one. one. And then even talking about fertilizing eggs and be like, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, like, I want to do that, but, like, oh, my God, I can't. I can't. I can't. Thank God her eggs are protected and frozen by themselves I was about to with say, none yeah. of that okay. sperm. God. <gasps> Thank God. Oh, God. Thank goodness. What a relief. <sighs> the eggs are safe. Yes. <laughs> my next cringe <laughs> moment was my conversation with Allie where I say I not only would trust Brock oh, with no. Rachel at a club at 1 a.m. dancing, but I would also trust them in the same bed. This one did not age well. But that just shows mm. how much you trusted your friendship. Both and how of good, them. And yeah. yeah. And, like, at the same time, like, you're a good friend. And, like, you obviously trust your husband. And, you know, so it's just, like. Yeah. I don't blame you for saying that. I said I, it multiple times. No, guys. <laughs> and Thankfully, I see we it. only saw it once. <laughs> and I think that's why everybody was so shocked. Because that's the person she was. Was the girl who, like, yeah. just is friends with everyone. Yeah. Which, yeah, I, I think it, like, really touches on, I think her decisions were, like, I don't think she would do that to you. Like, I, I don't think she would do that. But Ariana and I are one in the same when it comes to her. So yeah. it's like if you, and I even, when I started questioning her, I literally said to her verbatim, like, I think something's going on. You're not saying it. So, like, I'm going to keep thinking this and doing my own private investigation i think you're lying to me but like go ahead keep lying yeah i said but also it makes me feel like if you could do this to ariana you could do it to me and she goes oh my god no sheena it's different i'm like what do you mean it's different because you are doing that to ariana she's like no 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 of course (gasps) not she goes i just mean it's different like brock's like a big brother like i would never i would never do that to you i go i thought sandoval was like a big brother to you too i think she also knows Brock would never And cross that's what that Brock line, said. Yeah. That's why every time I've been asked about it, I'm like, no, I don't think anything's it's the happened. Man. I absolutely questioned him because now I'm like, I don't trust anybody. Right. Everyone's bad. Like I have like the Lala in my brain. But Brock was like, first of all, honey, no. Second of all, no. Third of all, I would have never given her that impression that yeah, it was right. like open as we know Sandoval did. Yeah. Right. And they can lie all they want and say they never had this open relationship conversation who knows how long this has actually been going on but so something was said something was definitely said it's so sad i mean it's disgusting more it's the most disgusting for tom i mean obviously you think as a friend raquel should say something to ariana like hey your boyfriend's hitting on me right Mm -hmm. because again what was the end game yeah exactly like and you know like all girls i mean men also know you're going to ruin everything in your life if you yes. do that. Yeah. And there's so many men out there who can actually sing. Sorry. I know. <laughs> I, I am curious, though, like, from your perspective, because it, it seemed like almost like Raquel and Ariana got closer after the affair started. Do you feel like they grew closer this I do. fall? Mm. That is what's the most troubling That's to me. That's so sick. I know. Because, like, like I said, for Tom, he clearly was just a coward, like mm-hmm. a, a disgusting coward about this. But with Raquel, the thing that's so suspicious and like, how could she look at her? It is right? Like, is like you would think she'd be distancing oh. herself. Right. You but would she, think but she got closer to her, and it's like, uh-huh. do you think that she? I had this theory today. Do you think that she like wanted wants to be like Ariana? Yes. Like, do you think she saw Ariana? Because Ariana oh. has the beautiful house. She yes. was starting a, another business. She's had these other businesses. She's always been like one of the girls in the group that's been respected and I'm like do you think that th- part of this was an envy and like a desire to be like Ariana I think that's definitely yeah. part of it mm-hmm. I think she's a very lost girl who did not have an end game 
like she didn't know what she was doing this for you know was yeah. it was it love no you're not actually in love come on was it for attention probably part of it was it to feel something you never felt with someone else like whatever it was but at the end of the day what was your end game are you gonna be with a sandoval and get married and have babies and be together forever Can you probably imagine? not i don't think he's capable of that with his track record like yeah. he's obviously i'm sorry he's cheated on every yeah. girlfriend he's ever had yeah so he makes the statement, once a cheater, always a cheater. True. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, though. Like, part of me feels like it wouldn't be the craziest thing if they did try to make a relationship happen. I, I mean, like I think it's the only thing they can do at this yeah, point. Yeah, right now, I think they're yeah. going to try to do that, or they're trying to do that, because yeah. uh, who else do they have right now? Well, th yeah, they don't have anybody, but I don't know. Crisis PR, too. So. Yeah, uh, have we Crisis hidden? PR. Have we hit everything on your list? That yet? was just oh, yeah, two. That was only two. That, that was, was only two. two. <laughs> oh, God. My, my next cringe <laughs> moment. <laughs> I actually physically got chills watching my conversation with Sandoval at the beach. Because mm -hmm. I no now know he was lying to my face. There's, oh, Raquel, and how they're gonna try and make that. I'm like, yeah, man, how are they gonna do that to her? Like, yeah. it was like, we're like each other's hype, man, like, for Raquel. Yeah. <sighs> so sad. Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> so well, that oof, got well, me. So I, I had told you how when Bravo posted that cheat sheet for us, that like yes. very helpful cheat sheet, I did <laughs> go back and watch because I'm just a little bit of like, I just, I'm a bit of an investigator and I'm like, I have to, I have to figure this out. Yeah. And and you question you were very much like you were questioning when the Miami rumor came up. Oh yeah. When it originally happened. And then you were like, I have to respect like Ariana and that kind of thing. At what point in this situation with the rumors going around, did you start to potentially question could Sandoval be doing this again? Or was it truly not until you found out? It was at the end of January. Okay. Lala had put some things in my head that finally clicked and seemed weird to me. Mm -hmm. I thought it was very weird that when Rachel was up in Sonoma, she went to a Tom Sandoval and the Most Extras show in Roseville, which is like Sacramento. I saw that on her story and thought that was odd that she was- But she didn't post oh, at was, okay, the show. That Maybe That's was what was show. weird. Okay. It was, she's been to several, yeah. she's been to every single one of his shows since he started. Literally every single show, she's never missed one. Wow. The only one she missed is when we, our flight got canceled from here to New York because we were actually flying to New York to see one of his shows. Oh my god! But I gosh. think that was before this. I yeah. honestly, I don't know anymore because it could go back to Coachella for me. I'm convinced. Yeah, yeah. But she was in Roseville. She was in Roseville. She was at that show and she never posted anything. Mm. And that to me was weird because I'm like, did your phone die? Were you too drunk? And then I'm like, I have seen her so fucked up in the front row still capturing every video she yeah. can. So that was the first time when Lala said she saw the wheels start turning and I was like, hold on, there might be some truth to this. Yeah. And that's when I started questioning them. What really made sense was when Lala said at the end of the episode, I don't know if it was preview. Oh, that was chilling. That was oh the my preview. God. The way oh my that God. he looks at Raquel is the yes. same way he looked at Ariana. Like, yeah. That part really got me. I know. Wild. I know. Like, I literally sat there like, because <gasps> it's true. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. No. Oh. oh. So my last, um, it's not even a cringe. It was just the preview for next week. <laughs> OMG. Yeah. OMG. I'm so excited. Oh, and then, uh, y'all, that's not even like the original finale. We still have more. How many after more that. episodes is it left? I think after this week, three more regular episodes. I'm literally gonna freak out. Like I'm, I'm actually just like losing my mind at this point because it's just it's watching so... it through the lens yeah. of what we know. Is, I know. I'm yelling, and I'm. I know. It's, oh, it's and then crazy. I'm looking at myself, and I'm just like. How did you Ugh. not see any? It's the writing is right there on the wall in front of me, and I'm just like, no, I don't, I don't see it. How um, <laughs> that's how just you being a good friend. 
when when people started like talking about the potential of like Tom and Raquel like around this time like in the episode so that's what beginning of September yeah how soon did Ariana hear about these rumors was she kind of like kept from them at first or like did she hear about them like right away at first about like the open relationship and the Tom and her at the Abbey Mm -hmm. we had kept from her because she had just flown to Florida because her grandma grandma, passed away so there was probably a couple days she didn't know what conversation was going on because I was like look I am not about to text her be like hey just so you know what you're missing over here like no way yeah Yeah, so we all agreed that we weren't going to say anything to her but then Sandoval as you saw in the episode, he told Katie, you know, like, Ariana's not happy with you because he ended up calling her. Oh, okay. And so I put that on him. I was like, this is your relationship. I'm going to give you all of the information I have. Do with that as you please. I've just chosen to not say anything to Ariana out of respect for what she's going through right now. Yeah. And he was like, don't worry. Like, I'll tell her, like, when the time's right. And I think on one of their, like, catch-up FaceTimes, he let her know. Mm. Ugh. <sighs> anyway, we're going to take a little break, <laughs> process all of that, and we'll be right back. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Though. I don't know how I'm going to get through the rest of the season. I might lose my shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited for the, the I just feel so bad for you, Sheena, honestly. Like, I, I literally have so much sympathy for you. Like, this girl was in your wedding. Like, it just makes me, like, sad for, like, there's, like, a group of people in particular that were, like, so close t- to the situation. And I feel like you are such a victim Thank in you. all of this. And I do feel really, really bad because I know how much you love Ariana. Like, that's very clear. Yeah. And this is just, like, such a massive betrayal. And I think... I don't know. It just it makes me really sad because like you're mourning a loss as well of yeah. of a friend. Yeah, two friends. Two friends, yeah. And a friend that you fought so hard for. So yeah. hard. Like, yeah. That's what gets I mean, me. there was no talking me off the Raquel ledge. Like I was team her all season, fought so hard for her against everyone. Like you guys are wrong, as did Ariana. It's yeah. like Well, that's what she did. That's what, like, kudos to her in the sense of, like, she didn't do this on purpose. Because I think, like, but because the image she worked so hard to create, it made it easier to cover up this affair. Because, like, think about if it had been almost any other cast member and they had been having these accusations thrown at them, like, probably people would have been more likely to believe it, Mm -hmm. unfortunately. Like, but because Raquel was always, like, so perfect-seeming, like, people just were like, no way, you yeah. know? Like, you, you were like, no way. And everybody like was like... she's everyone's little sister. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how it was, I think, able to go. Because, I mean, the writing's on the wall. I want to know if Lisa Vanderpump knew during that conversation at Sir, where she's like, why are you smiling? I'm like, did she pick up right? on a vibe? She picked up on a vibe for sure. There's no way she knew. She didn't even know about rumors then, but... She picked up on a vibe, Mm -hmm. 100%. As I'm watching that, you see the wheels in her head start to turn. Like, why is he looking at her like that? She looks like she hated that. Like, she, I've never seen her, like, so uncomfortable on the show, I think. No, it's, there's, there's still so much more in the next few episodes. I don't even know how. Yeah. No. I'm excited, but I'm scared well i can i am like just so happy that i got to see i say i saw you this week this past like two weekends ago at coachella and to see ariana so happy like i was nervous that she wouldn't get to enjoy coachella because it had such a close association with tom totally but the fact that she seemed to just be having like such a good time like every time i saw her just made me like really yeah. happy yeah. because that would suck to have something like that you loved so much ruin. ruined no this was the perfect Coachella for her mm-hmm. Dan was the perfect person to be at Coachella with her yeah. his energy yeah. is <laughs> so crazy. incredible like yeah I literally was like what is this guy on and can I have some but I don't know <laughs> I, I literally I was like my god but it was so cute because she's so just cute. so chill and she's just standing there like yeah they both were just dancing around all day all night yeah like it was, yeah. That it probably was, was so freeing for her, honestly. Totally. Yeah. And I really like him. Yeah. So. He seems really nice. Like, yeah. I mean, he, he just gave off this, like, really genuine energy about him. And mm-hmm. he just didn't seem to care about, like, she had so many fans coming up to her. And, like, it didn't seem to, like, phase him in, like, a way that. I think it had to have been exhausting for Ariana to be with someone who constantly wanted to be the center of attention. Yes, and one hundred percent. How refreshing for yeah, the, the, for yeah. Have somebody like, who's energetic and brings you up yes. and like and gives you like like you can see some qualities of like that that 
higher yeah. self that they both have, but it's like it, it was so refreshing to see that like she could shine and it wasn't like someone just trying to like constantly outshine her. Yeah. No, that's a really good point cuz I kind of feel like in my last relationship with Rob that not in like a narcissistic like bad way but I felt like he was that Sandoval where it was like more about him and then I just kind of fit into his mold and whatever worked for him yeah and then Brock is the Dan where it's like let's just party and have fun and I just want to love you and give you my good energy and this is just exactly what she needs right now and honestly like I hope they do date and it goes somewhere and I hope so too yeah because I I can't wait to see the guy again I'm like (laughs) I'm going to be in New York in a couple weeks like let's get drinks yeah so Aww, yeah like all right switching gears and shows okay <laughs> let's talk love island oh man Yay. i gotta drink more of my drink <laughs> <laughs> so uh, your guys's show has a lot of episodes it's a commitment yeah but when does. you're in it like you're, you're in it yeah. and you're committed yeah. so i've only been able to fully do that one season it was when i was pregnant <laughs> and it was i think the season right before yours with cache and cinco no that was after mine oh that was, was after okay so I, I was on before tw- yours yeah. yeah gotcha yeah so she was, was on two seasons because i was on two and four so you saw three okay so yeah which three is a treat you know that one is fun that one is probably the biggest personalities out of the entire show are all on season three i haven't seen season three it's wild anyway (laughs) carry on yeah so i two years ago whenever this was on i was still i think pregnant i made a bunch of notes in my phone that i still had of questions i wanted to ask if i ever got someone from love island on my podcast oh my god i'm so excited (laughs) i had to like curate it a little differently because there were ones specific about some cast members on that season but there were just so many things I wanted to know. So I'm like, how many hours a day are y'all really filming? And are obviously there's the cameras there, but are there also cameramen? How often? Okay. 24 hours a day. Yeah, 24 hours a day. There's 80 robo cams I just learned. Oh. Wow. And what is interesting about your show versus our show, um, you guys have camera guys in front of you. Right. And so ours is like a border kind of like this so that's the whole aspect of like the villa the whole like backyard there's there's steady cams they're stable they're not they're not moving yeah at all. but there's men behind a camera in the walls oh so they're, so they're are, hidden yeah, yeah they're hidden yeah but oh. you can see them because yeah. you'll hear like a sliding at least on like season two it was like you hear like a sliding of they, a like, door, open the door and then yeah. all of a sudden you'll see because i was on i was actually on summer house and so i'm assuming it's filmed similarly to how banner pump is yeah and the big cams are in your face wait you were on summer house yeah i did it you did it carl yeah shut up oh that right when you said that i was like oh my god she's the that wow. was me. Yeah, that was me. Well, I guess we have someone in common. <laughs> oh my god, you too. <laughs> I never actually I never slept with him, but I didn't either. Well, I didn't. And a lot of women who have dated him have said the same thing. Yeah. No, we never got to <laughs> that. Like a call. We never, we got never got to did that point. either. We literally I mean, he came out to visit me here. I went out there. I stayed in his place like Same. Never. <laughs> Wow, I'm <laughs> loving this. This is incredible. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Were you with him when he was drinking still? Yes. Okay. Heavily drinking, drinking. Carl. Yeah. That Carl. Yeah. yeah. I literally have a photo of him from my birthday. I guess it would be five, four years ago. I think it was 2019. Because okay, then I met yeah. Brock end of like 2019. Okay, yeah. Whatever birthday it was, we were all, we dressed in all white. We got a yacht in Marina, went out for like a sunset cruise. Then we went and karaoke after, went to my house in Palm Springs for a couple days. Just had like a full, I had just, yeah, I just closed escrow. So it was four years ago. Wow. Went out to Palm Springs. It was one of my first weeks in my house. And I have a photo of him. And I posted it the next year for his birthday. And I was like, never forget, happy birthday. (laughs) And he fell asleep on the floor in my den. And just, we started playing just a little joke. And one by one, we started setting different things around him to see if he would wake up. (laughs) And by the time, like, the five of us were done, I mean, he had on, like, a sombrero. (laughs) There were, like, cactus around him. (laughs) Oh, my God. Teddy bear. It was hilarious. But we, I, I, I love Carl. He's still a good friend of mine. We had a fun time together but um 
That is just so funny when you said that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> did, I, I don't. I didn't quite have the same experience with him. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's a whole other story, yeah. which I can get into another time. But yeah, it's very different from how your cameras are set up because, mm-hmm. like, I just remember being on that show and there was so much drama going on that one weekend. So the big cams were like constantly on a group of people and so it was crazy like at that point you knew like okay no one's filming me so like whatever i'm doing like i don't have to right. worry but on love island like you could be being filmed at any moment oh. like you have to be like hyper yeah hi- there's, there's there i mean they're in the bathroom too there's microphones and the headboards like yeah i remember one of my favorite thing mackenzie ever did was we were going to bed she goes leave your mic here meet me in the bathroom yeah and that's when she told me like she wanted to leave yeah she was like ready to i leave. was ready to go the second time around i was like <laughs> Yeah. Get me out of here. So did you come in like Casa Amor the second time around or were you there from the beginning? I came in after Casa Amor. Okay. So like everybody and I agree, they say like they just brought you in way too late because they brought yeah. me in and you know, they can't predict that. It's right. their their Casa Amor shook things up in a weird way. It was like all of a sudden they had all these extra people, but then a bunch of people kept on leaving. Like we had, there I were think, four people that left by choice. Myself. I think we had like oh, wow. nine people leave our season yeah. by choice. Wow. Like a crazy nine? high number. Nine? Okay. No, I, like I four can't or five. Right now, but. Nick, Kat, myself, Maddie. Maddie? Jeff no, and Naja. Maddie kind of got eliminated. Did she leave by oh, choice? She self eliminated. Yeah, yeah. self eliminated. Um, okay, maybe it is more. Yeah. It was a that's good, a lot of people. That's a lot of people. I mean, like, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, have, I think it was just like, for me, it was like the conditions of like this season was just not. It was just not it for me. Yeah. Compared to, like, I didn't even think we were living lush on season two, but compared to season four, I felt like I was in, like, summer camp. And I was like, (laughs) it's time to go home. That was the theme of Summer's birthday this weekend. (laughs) Welcome to Summer Camp. It was so (laughs) cute. Summer has to be, like, one of the cutest babies. Thank you. I've seen in a long time. No, I'm obsessed with her. Like, Is she going to be an actress? Um, we just got some photos taken. Yes! We got her an agent. Yes! So we haven't done more than that. Like, we haven't put them up on casting networks yeah. yet. Because, yeah. like, once we do it, you know, the calls are going to come in. And we're very busy the next few weeks still. But uh, we want to do it. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. College yeah. fund. We're going to make a show. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. We started her college fund with any money we got for the wedding. I'm like, first of all, we're having a destination wedding. I don't feel right taking money or gifts or anything from anyone. People are spending their own money to come and celebrate us. But if you insist, just know it's going to Summer's College Fund. Oh, I love that. So I took all of that money. I just ended up like from the Honey Fund into my PayPal. PayPal directly into an account for her. Oh, yeah, that's such a cute idea. Yeah. Also, what the heck? You were married already? Oh, yeah. What? Plot twist. (laughs) Yeah. She not for a whole year. Well, we tried to get married that summer and it just didn't work out. And so yeah, we're like, we're true. not waiting a whole other year yeah. in summer. I was yeah. like, if we decide in a year we want to actually do a wedding, we will. But we're going to get married now because that was literally already our plan. Yeah. So we just still went through with the plan, but we decided to not tell anyone literally outside of our parents yeah because we if we decided we wanted to do a wedding we didn't want to spoil that right for everyone else and yeah. then be like oh you're already married and then it just wouldn't have been but how nice for you to thing. not have that pressure yeah i feel like that is yeah no, like losing that's of the marriage certificate yeah. yeah you guys were fully there was no question of that you're yeah like, we don't have to worry about our first year of marriage we're already past yeah that. totally so everyone's like how's i'm like we've been married for over a year it was like every interview i did up until this ep- last episode like uh, airing i've just it's a hard secret yeah. to keep I know. <laughs> it's the, the biggest secret I've ever kept. Yeah. yeah I'm but sure. it's a long time too. Yeah. I just felt like it was the right thing. And also, I didn't want people to be talking shit coming off a bad season of Brock. You know, when the fans got to know him, it wasn't in the best way. Mm-hmm. Unless you watched us on my YouTube channel, listened to shenanigans, you didn't get to know the Brock I fell in love with and wanted to marry. So, also just to protect that i wasn't ready to blast it if it worked out that last season and we got married then whatever people would have said whatever they wanted to say but we wanted to get married for us and we just wanted to do it without the outside chitter chatter of yeah why and all of that so no that's great surprise (laughs) was a great surprise (laughs) yeah okay my biggest question i wanted to know as i was watching the season was how many outfits did you guys bring like how like for that many different days and then also 
I remember the season I watched, it was like a big like Fashion Nova party and like you get gifted stuff or how does it work with wardrobe? How many suitcases, like how do you pack? I think I brought four suitcases. Yeah. I literally wow. brought six times six. I brought, I tried to bring like 36 outfits because you're filming for six weeks, six at night and then you don't get anything. I mean, further along we got, I think I got a total of four dresses from wardrobe. Okay. Um, and then like four swimsuits. Yeah, I will say they helped us out, I think more with gifting on my season. Like I say my season, I mean two. Mm -hmm. Like they came in probably every week with new stuff for what? us, but it was kind of a hit <laughs> And then after that, they're like, fuck this. <laughs> it was kind of like a hit or miss as to whether or not it would fit though. Like a lot of it was stuff that didn't necessarily fit, but mm -hmm. we were also a lot more casual on season two. Like I didn't pack any shorts really, like we're jeans and so Sally and I actually like people wouldn't think we're the same size but we wore the same size jeans and I would have to borrow from her but no what was the saddest thing was like my first year this one girl got eliminated like very early on and she had so much clothes like she had bought so much clothes to the show because like you are it's like the bachelor and like yeah. the bachelor you're funding all of that like if wardrobe gifts you something that's like a bonus it's not right. something that you can rely on yeah. they're not styling you yeah yeah no one does our hair and makeup like nobody's doing any of that well no that was another thing I had made a note of was I said why so much makeup every day <laughs> I'm like, I get it. We're all filming a TV show. But I'm like, it, the season I watched, I mean, it was like every morning, the girls. And then it was like full glam. And I'm like, who has that energy? That was the most exhausting thing for me was getting ready twice a day, every single oh day. Oh, my God. My hair was fried after two. Yeah, I learned. It was, I would have given up. I think. I've given yeah. up on season 10 of Vanderpump Rules. I mean, there are several seasons. I'm like, I remember before, I'm like, I have to have my tinted moisturizer. I have to have my base. I have to have my <laughs> eyebrows. Now I'm like don't care yeah. a lot of bad film <laughs> no this season i didn't do any makeup during the day i was like i forget it but i mean the hard thing is like you don't it's not like you're getting to see the monitor and like seeing how you look without makeup mm -hmm. so like you don't know like how unflattering it is so i think that some girls you're like i just want to like good point. look my best because if they gave us like a sample and they're like this is what you look like then like maybe you know yeah. you wouldn't yeah. have like cared as much i gave up after a little i thought i was gonna wear cute pajamas every night like <laughs> look so good like and then i was just like you know what i don't care this isn't me but I mean what was I going to say if this isn't the important. hardest part though is like so in the morning you get about like two oh, to yeah. three hours because you're responsible for your own breakfast the only thing that they provide like for you to eat you get a break is for lunch mm -hmm. but like in the morning that's the only guaranteed time that you have to get ready for anything that th it comes your way that day. And when I came in later on in the show for the second time, there were challenges every single day, pretty oh, much. Wow. So we had to be like ready to potentially be on camera for a challenge. Mm -hmm. And that's where you know you're gonna get filmed a lot more. So it was like I had to learn from my first season because I, was, I wasn't ready soon enough. And that's why I lost so much weight was because at dinner, we would be getting ready while we ate dinner. And it was like, get ready or eat dinner. Yeah, so I right. didn't eat dinner and I would just get ready. And so I think I lost like 10 pounds the oh first time gosh. I was on the show. You I don't was, have 10 pounds to lose. I was so skinny. Like I was so skinny and not in a way that like, I would be like, oh yeah, like look this way. Like it was literally, <laughs> I think I wasn't they eating. did work on that though. Cause I remember like we would, they would say, okay, who needs a shower? And they'd be like, okay, you have shower. And then like they were, I feel like, more lenient with our time when we said we needed more time or no yeah i guess so i, I your dressing room was so much smaller than ours what? too ours was huge you had a whole hotel though no we didn't we they just <laughs> so they converted they converted the day club at dre's for season two okay. they built a set yeah and so our whole thing was a set like that wasn't our dressing room wasn't there the boys had their own dressing rooms that's what i hate about season four so you had to walk oh. through, so the boys didn't have a dressing room season four, so you had to walk through their bedroom, like our bedroom that's shared, to get to the bathrooms, and the boys would hang out in there because they had nowhere else to hang out mm. when the girls were in their dressing room. So if you had to like go you take a poo, you had to pee you had when I'm to getting go. ready? I was thinking about like, yeah. what if you had to poo and you walk by and they you- were, They poop you, shamed. They'd be like, you pooped, you took too long. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so, it's oh so my embarrassing. Uh, my bowel movements were all over the place. Oh, I can it. imagine. <laughs> Jesus. It was not okay. So what time would you guys have to like wake up every day and then go to bed? Like how much sleep are you actually getting? There's no clocks. We're not allowed to know you, what time it you is. You don't even know what time? You just go to bed when you're tired and you wake up when you we wake get, up? No, when we're allowed we go to, to bed go when to we're bed. told to go to bed. Oh, yeah. bedtime. <laughs> curfew. Yeah, literally getting out. Oh, because don't they like announce something yeah. and they're like, okay, time There's to go like to bed? There's like an all call. 
And sometimes right. when you would do like your last interview, they would say, okay, you can start getting ready. But you said you all had to wait for everyone to be done though. For Yeah. So ours was different on season two. They would have little chats with us and it wasn't, you couldn't go to bed until every single person was in the bedroom. And so the process of going to bed, they would say start around like, you know, one time and it'd be about two hours before like wow. it was lights out so if you could try to go to sleep you could you could try that but it yeah. usually didn't go that well like but I learned I think on average we maybe got about five hours of sleep a night but it's because you're more emotional and you're more submissive to somebody's will i.e like more willing to do what the producers imply when you're tired yeah so I'm like, that's oh, true that makes sense it's all psychological they but we did get to take so a lot of naps up. <laughs> <laughs> see we weren't allowed to take naps on season two really when i tell you like i felt like i was on two different shows wow. like it was not the same thing like you guys this season was so lax compared to what we could do a whole episode just talking about this we turned out we turned out yeah. a whole thing because it was so because there's so much they have to film in one day like there's right. so much that they're filming so they have like a really tight schedule so like yes do I think part of it is like you are more submissive but honestly like with the sleep thing I think that's I've now worked on the other side in production I PA and stuff and like you've done it obviously yeah. you know there's a strict schedule to follow yeah, there so, really is but I mean and it's like that's fair they have like two crews during the day I'm assuming and then so once the like we're still filming when the night crew comes in and yeah so, yeah that does make sense actually yeah yeah that's a good point <laughs> so you had mentioned breakfast and like you had those couple hours in the morning did you guys get to make your orders for food or it's kind of just like well here's what is in the fridge make whatever you want or did you get to like request certain things for breakfast we could make whatever was in the fridge and we also could be like in our mics like can i have some eggs or something and you, they usually would appear the next day they called it the magic pantry <laughs> yeah. so we could request things we wanted um but then for lunch and dinner, it was like catering, but okay. like family style. Yeah. So we got TV meals my first season, <gasps> like literally. T no, not good ones. Oh, like no. like t <laughs> like like tin foil, like what you would get like at like a prison or something. Oh, like because you were COVID TV. season. Yeah, it was COVID. That's season. what I was gonna ask yeah. you because I know the season I watched was coming right off COVID, so I yeah. figured yours had to be during. So or yeah, right we before. were quarantined for a whole month prior to going on to the show wow. in a hotel room by ourselves. So then we go into the hotel. And also, mind you, at this point, like in COVID, I didn't really go out and socialize. I was staying with my parents and they were like very strict. So I had barely seen people for months. And then I'm alone for a month in a Vegas hotel room where, I mean, those those windows are made to be like shatterproof so that yeah. way people can't jump out. So it's like literally oh. like, I'm not getting sunshine. We occasionally got to go outside. And you have no phone? No phone for two of the four weeks. Yeah. We kept it for the first two weeks and then when they announced the cast, um, then they take your phone away. But yeah, it was this was the first time that the show was going on when I came back. So I was an original my first season. So I didn't get to see anybody until I got in there. But oh. watching it and then so we watch it before we go on the show. Right. If you come in later. Yeah. And I, it's such a different experience. Like, you, I guess you haven't experienced it, yeah. but it's like I had so much just like. I just hopelessness because I'm like I don't like anybody like I don't like and I like I'm yeah. like I'm like waiting for somebody to come in and I just like it was I like have so much like empathy for the people that come in later like that because it's really really hard to be in that position and it's very different and then the public gives them shit for like oh you're just taking what's available but it's like sometimes you only have so many options yeah, connections have exactly. already been being made yeah. for, exactly. and you guys are together 24 7 so yeah. it's like those connections go a lot quicker right yeah i mean my my method was when i came back was i friend zoned the guy that i knew they were gonna try to set me up with in the hopes that if they were gonna send in more people that they would send them in mm. but then i was the last one and i was like no way bro <laughs> I don't know, you should have come before casa not that casa had not that good casa options. was anything that was worthwhile <laughs> maybe oh my you would have prevented me from my bad decisions oh my god uh, but yeah. i didn't know i didn't even think about you being quarantined in a hotel room because we were quarantined for four weeks also before but i had 
like a one bedroom hotel room we all did so we all had patios and balconies like i loved it i was like oh wow i kept calling it my summer internship because i was like this is the best job (laughs) like i could sit outside like no that was not the case for us that's so different i don't think i would have made it honestly it was definitely like this time around did feel like a vacation because i was in there for two weeks Mm -hmm. in pacifica suites i'm literally planning a trip back like i want to go at the one year i want to go back i really want to go back but yeah Yeah, i I think someone died there what i heard that (laughs) oh my god let's go back i don't know if that's like accurate it's probably not (laughs) did anyone when you guys because you all sleep in the same room did anyone have sex at night in that room or only in like the whatever the room's called there are some people that i for sure think probably did but they were just secretive about it. Yeah, people on your season were, like, super secretive about sex stuff. Yeah, I kind of wish they weren't, but at the same time, like, I hate even the sound of people making out. Yeah. But also, you're so tired, so I pretty much, like, slept through everything. I've never seen people so, like, uh, so afraid to go in the hideaway. Like, your season, nobody, people were like, no, I don't want to go in the hideaway, no. And I'm like, you realize, like... It, you don't have to have sex in there. Like, you can just go in the hideaway. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I did. It was great. It was time. so quiet, and the bed was so comfy. Although, the hideaway, though, isn't where you would think it was located. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a secret. I know. I'm not telling. I'm not saying where it was. Oh. But I'm, I'm just like. Tea. But it's like, well, I will say, I'm allowed to talk Movie about. Magic. I'm not. I'm allowed to talk about my first season. The hideaway sucked. <laughs> 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 when I went in that one, no, it sucked. It was so awful, and it just, I don't know. Lights and cameras do a lot to make things look better. I'll say that. Yeah, our hideaway was Interesting. nice. It doesn't make everything look bigger, but it makes some things look better. <laughs> <laughs> that could mean many things. Could. <laughs> so you also don't have like any music you can listen to, right? You just have to go to sleep listening to other people possibly make out. Yeah. Oh my god, I need like my calm app or at least Summer's white noise machine with the baby monitor next to my head. Like I need some sort of noise. A lot of melatonin. Yeah. That's... And sometimes you would even hear like if we would go to bed super late, like two or three a.m we would wake up to the sound of people starting to work like in the villa because they would like come oh, in for work yeah. and we were still sleeping and they would let us sleep in if we went to bed super late but yeah just the sound of people making out and yeah. then it was just like wake up and then everyone puts their sunglasses on because they don't have makeup on we weren't allowed to wear sunglasses so that ended on season three yeah i guess i so i always got up before they all got up on season four just naturally you woke up early yeah i just wanted to get out of there because i was never like excited to stay in bed with my partner so i was like also get the me out worst of bed. thing <laughs> ever up. being woken up by lights and yeah. then you hear good morning islanders you're like uh, <sighs> right yeah. <laughs> yeah that part is not fun i think yeah i think going to sleep on the show has to be one of the worst parts the first night was probably the worst night of sleep i've ever gotten in my life because yeah. it's yeah. almost because you're in a set so it's like there's like cardboard almost like and then I always joked that it was like in a Costco like hot dog oven because the like cameras that are night vision or whatever are like above us so you're like roasting out of it. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing but you obviously get used to everything super quick yeah but what an adjustment yeah coming back into the real world was wild like I can imagine I went to Trader Joe's like right when I got back and having free will like and so many options whatever I want it was crazy <laughs> I like I'm like wow it's probably another reason why they like sequester you for a couple weeks before just to get you a little stir crazy and so then yeah. when you get there you're like ah people interaction yeah. touch me there, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's so interesting like to compare like our kind of like our side of reality tv to like your side mm-hmm. because it's very much like i don't know how much you guys like talk to production about storylines or whatever but it's like we are so much like at the mercy of them and like it's very much they have an idea of who they want us to be and they'll adjust according to how people are acting or who comes in but they have a game plan and they are just we are just pawns Mm -hmm. in that game and i think anyone who thinks that you have any free will on that show yeah you you don't i mean you really don't. Oh, no, I felt that way just watching it. I watch reality TV so differently now, and with shows like that, yeah, I feel like you could just tell. Yeah, it's. I mean, I think it's just, it is a lot of, like, deception. Like, my first season, I was so incredibly unaware of so many things that were happening that it was, like, my partner was saying things behind my back that I didn't know about, and then there's conversations going on that I didn't know about, and there's 
like there's a lot of things going on that you're not aware of and I think people forget that of like it's not like where you can text somebody and be like so what's going on mm-hmm. like, and then the public is seeing right. those conversations yeah so, yeah and so they know about yeah, it we're watching it right. live basically yeah, yeah. And, and so they're like, oh, they must know. They forget that you don't know about it. Yeah. Like, it, and it's probably the same thing for you guys of, like, you'll watch a scene that, like, maybe you had no idea happened. Oh, yeah. Every season. Yeah. I'm like, bitch. Yeah. You said what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does that get awkward? Is there, like, a lot of, like, apology text messages that, like, go around, like, Some, yes. Week? Like, some save it for the reunion. Yeah. It just depends on who and what the situation is. But... I definitely do that. I'll watch it back and I'm like, oh my god. I, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of the reason why I've avoided watching my season back because I'm know. like, I don't want to misjudge anybody who may have said something in yeah. the moment that they didn't mean because yeah. I have my own perceptions of them already. Yeah. And then also I'm like, I don't really know if I want to know what I said. <laughs> well, even we had a text exchange afterwards oh, because yeah. I like at, at the point where I went on the show, like I knew I probably wasn't going to meet anybody, and so when I went on, I was very much like set my intention of Deb was in a relationship that while the guy was very nice and I I did believe that he was a nice guy it didn't seem like the right fit and I left in a relationship that was not the right fit for me and so I wanted to like help Deb to like maybe you know explore other options because there was someone in there who I think she might have had fun with but ultimately you wouldn't have dated him Jeff. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You oh, would have had I fun. Yeah, like they had such good banter, but um, th- he had his own thing that happened yeah. with him. But I said a lot of things about like I think Deb deserves better. Like I think or she just deserves different. Mm-hmm. And so when she came off with the guy, I like texted her and I was like, just so you know, like I- I'm supportive of you guys. I just wanted to like point out what I thought might be a better situation for you. Yeah. Just like. Just giving, like, you know, that uh, that big sister advice that, like, you don't want to hear, but, like, they're yeah. going to give it to you anyway. And yeah. then the interviews after the show were, like, oh, there was somebody that was trying to break you up. And it was me. And, yeah. That's, and yeah, and so I was texting her. I was, like, I'm so sorry if I said anything mean. Like, because yeah. I, I really did value her advice. Yeah. And, like, honestly, she did end up being right. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are no longer together. We are not. And what is your relationship status? Um. So I met my my, my boyfriend on the show but we didn't start dating until after the show okay so he was on the production side of things oh yes but nothing happened until I left the island. I'm very much a rule follower. I'm the, I'm the exact <laughs> same way. I'm like, I'm like very like, oh shit, I don't want to get in trouble. Cause I was very thankful to be asked back, you know? Yeah. And um, it just like, I mean, I was so grateful to have met him. And I think that I was always looking for somebody who could understand my experience. Mm-hmm. And I, I've been, I went on the first show three years ago. And like in those three years, like I've been dating my boyfriend eight months but before that like dating was so hard because nobody could understand like that I'm forever changed by that experience Mm -hmm. and so many of my friends are from Love Island and I think like you know everyone can handle life after the island differently but for me like I really wanted to meet somebody who would be able to understand what I went through yeah, and to meet someone that is a, like a degree removed from it, but right. still understands say, it. Right, I was going to say, because once you start dating other people in reality, it's just... Yeah. I feel like it's a lot of the same type of person. Like we said, yeah. almost competing for the attention. attention. Totally. Yeah. It's definitely like hard to do, but yeah, maybe we'll see Deb on Love Island Games. I don't, Ooh. I don't know. I never heard of that. <laughs> They announced it. Oh, yeah. It's not a secret anymore. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Will I go? I'm not so good at games. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) So as we all sit here and sip on these Uza mimosas, I have to know, did you guys drink a lot of alcohol there? And was there a limit? Yes, there was a limit. Was it like a two-drink minimum? Because I know on The Bachelor, or Bachelor in Paradise, after a situation several seasons ago, they started cutting back on the alcohol. Because I'm like, I swear, they used to just get fucked up. And now it's like, even on Vanderpump Rules, it used to kind of be however much, and now production will only cover a certain amount. Anything past that, we have to pay for. And also, if we're even going to have one drink, we have to Uber. It's like not even an option. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think that Bachelor incident really changed reality Mm -hmm. TV. Honestly, probably for the better, but not for the viewer, because obviously that's what the viewers want to see. But yeah, we got, I think, 
max three glasses of wine and when we got multiple glasses of wine they were not large glasses yeah of wine. we got two on my season each night pretty much guaranteed wine um it was random if they would let you have like a mixed drink that was like occasional we n- i never you got, got yeah i barely drank on your season it was one glass of wine yeah we could get white wine red wine or champagne no a beer. beer it was a beer not champagne and that was it and i remember like wow. we were so desperate we were like does red wine or white wine like make you have a higher Which like, has, you know, like, something, like, like something we in, literally were like <laughs> no something in that red wine like it changes that that love island red wine hits different i'm it's like the equivalent of like three drinks one glass of that i think it's also because our tolerances are so yeah. low right if you're not drinking as often as like sometimes we'd we like do. not eat as much <laughs> dinner because we'd be like oh i want to feel something tonight <laughs> So wait, do you watch Bachelor in Paradise? Yeah. Okay, so I have this, like, theory that I've been working on. Okay. And that I find so interesting is, like, Bachelor in Paradise has produced some really successful couples, Mm -hmm. like, that are engaged, married, like, have kids. Love Island has, like, really barely yet to do that in the U.S. Like, there's maybe, like, two, three couples, maybe, like, maybe a little bit more than that. I might be missing some people. But it's very few success stories. You think about it, like, Love Island, you would think, like, they're together all day, every day. Like, we're not really separated. Like, we're seeing each other. You would think that that imitates the real world more. Mm -hmm. But somehow Bachelor in Paradise, even though they sleep apart... I've had that confirmed. It's like you don't sleep in the same room as your guy unless you sleep in the boom boom room. Yeah. But somehow they produce more successful couples. Like, can you imagine that? Like, you're sleeping apart from your partner every night and you're kind of a little bit more separated by gender. But I wonder if that's what maybe, maybe that's the yeah, key. Yeah, maybe that makes them right? like each other more. But also, I could be wrong, but are they older? No, they're the same age as no, us. No, they're mostly everyone's like in their twenties. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the people who go on the they're Bachelor, getting younger. They are, and it's like with the twenty-two year olds, you're like, come on, you're not, <laughs> you should not be looking for a husband right now. Yeah, you really shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. but th- I like find that so fascinating, and I feel like Love Island, if they actually want to produce like lasting couples, should like take a look at that because how is it that Bachelor in Paradise is making these couples that last? And Love Island is isn't. So Maybe they're also better with their matchmaking casting. Maybe. You know, if yeah. they because also the difference with Bachelor in Paradise is when people go on, they have their wish list. They have yeah. their, you know, top three people they want to meet because they already like them for these reasons. When you're on Love Island, you're meeting everyone there yeah you don't have a preconceived notion you don't have an expectation you don't really know anything about their story Mm -hmm. so i think that's different too because you know going in if this person's there i want to you know pursue a connection yeah and a lot of the times that does work they both happen to have a crush on each other so i think that's probably a big difference i never thought of that that's a good point probably exchange some dms and a lot of people have or they've like met at an event or something so a lot of people going into bachelor in paradise either have dm'd or had some sort of in-person interaction before they actually meet and some haven't but just based on watching the last season they're like oh my god this is the guy i want to date if that's what he's actually like in person that's a good point because if there was a season like bachelor in paradise with love island i feel like there's some people who i would be yeah very excited to get well is is that what the game's show is i think so that's what they're saying is it's gonna be i don't know if it's gonna be just all seasons of us or if it's gonna be international it should be both no, it's international, and that's what, like, I used to talk to someone from an international love island, and so if he ends up on the show and ends up with one of my friends, it's going to be so weird. <laughs> Ooh. We'll, he we'll forgot cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to fall in love with a UK boy. Oh, yeah, no. the mine, accents. Mine was an Aussie. Or an Australian guy. That's, yeah. that's mine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is true. The accent got me. Oh. I know. Okay, two more questions, and then I'm going to wrap it up and tell them where they can find you. I wanted to know if you have to wear swimsuits every single day and if you have to make your bed every single day. Mm. We do not have to wear swimsuits every single day. It's highly recommended, but you could wear, like, workout stuff if you mm-hmm. wanted to. And then we do not make our beds. Someone the comes in and does it, right? Lovely production comes in and yeah. does it. And they yeah. change the sheets. And, like, I would always feel so bad when I'd run in to go to the bathroom. They'd all be working. I'd be like, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> God, God bless the production team yeah. on Love Island. The the art crew on that set Ugh. was just amazing. Working double time, overtime. Like. I do think, though, there was a rule, though, because I think season three, they were wearing workout clothes too much. 
And I heard that they made the girls wear swimsuits every day. Well, I think that's why I maybe made that note I because I also, also had one saying, like, did you guys all plan on matching workout sets? Like, I had a note in here about how many matching workout sets No, I think that was just, wore. like, everybody was so obsessed with those workout sets yeah. during that time that, yeah. like, everyone just had the same ones. But, no, I thought there was a rule made after that. I Wasn't it that they were wearing workout clothes because it was – raining yeah it was not great weather that's why when everyone's like are you bummed it wasn't in a tropical location i'm like no my hair looks fantastic because i was (laughs) in vegas yeah Yeah. in a dry climate yeah you i feel like you had the best weather of all four seasons it was really hot though it was so hot like yeah it was literally every night it's funny because like you'll see like johnny dressed in these suits and he was dripping with sweat close up like what time of year it was in the summer okay in in vegas it was hot it was very hot Yeah, i don't know we for us we were in santa barbara and it got so cold Cold. at night and so i don't know which one i would prefer honestly yeah maybe cold yeah, yeah, because you can always bundle up if you're cold. Yeah. But Except if they you're told hot, us sometimes just... that we couldn't because it looked ugly. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that was also one of the struggles of having to get ready for the night is like, I don't want to be cold. Mm-hmm. I hate being cold. Yeah, I hate being and cold. And it's not like you could drink yourself a sweater because we didn't get right. enough alcohol. <laughs> yeah, I think I would prefer, I'd pick the hot. Like, going through both, I yeah. would pick the hot because I never wanted to get dressed at night. I would. Yeah. I never wore a short dress. Like, aside from, like, 80s night. Yeah, there was heaters hidden places. So, like, the big blue couch, there's a heater, like, under the couch. that I was, like, sitting yeah. under there. Upstairs, like, the swing. Yeah, we there sat was... down on the floor to yeah. get the heat that one time. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. Little hacks. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, I'm so glad we were able to finally make this happen. This yes. was so much fun. I've had these questions for two years that I wanted I'm answered. So glad <laughs> I get answered. I know. <laughs> Me too. Please tell everyone where they can find you. My Instagram and TikTok. I don't know if you want my TikTok. It's <laughs> at Deb Chubb. Yes, they want your TikTok. <laughs> 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 Um, and you can find me at Mackenzie Dittman. And then this is my little brand out of his league. Oh, I love we're all it. Out of his league. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got Ariana's merch yes. over here, cooler than you. And it's all happening. I think I here. need some of your merch soon. Don't yes. you have a blue one? I have a couple new ones coming out. We have a blue sample. <gasps> Ooh. Um, I have two cropped. I've got a forest green, this peach one. I have a black. It really is all happening. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. So cute. Yes. All right. Well, thank you guys so thank much for, for having us. Thank, thank you for you. being here. So Bye. Bye. Thank you then.